Hey guys, how's it going? Today is going to be a day full of activity. Lots of different things going on, lots of different people working on different things. Uh, you can probably hear the hedge trimmers already. The boxwoods are being trimmed today and it's the first cooler day. 65 is our high today. It is going to warm back up, but that's perfect. We trim the boxwoods on a cool day, have some mild days right after it before it gets really cold. Hopefully they'll acclimate and we won't have much tip damage from cold temperatures. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, Samantha is out here with me trying to bounding around. We are going to start removing some sod. Paul and Aaron are going to be working on that in this area right behind me uh, because Pedro and his crew are going to be putting in the rock pathway that leads from the Hartley to our house, which we've already talked to you about that before. Um, I think we sh even showed you, we painted the lines and all of that. So that process is going to be started today. We're also going to be taking out these roses, which seems like a shame right now because they're starting to look pretty again. You know, during the summer, they lull out for weeks and weeks and there's not much color on them. But the problem with these is that almost all of them are climbing roses and it is a beast to try to keep them down. They're iceberg climbers. If any of you have grown those before, you know how aggressive they grow, how quickly they grow. They're beautiful, but just in the wrong spot. And because we're going to be redoing the flower beds right here, uh, we thought, let's just get these out all but one. Before I realized these were all climbing roses, there was a gap, there's one that had died. And so I planted a David Austin Tranquility Rose in its place. So I'm gonna dig that one up and hope to move it out somewhere where it can continue to grow and thrive but the rest of them will come out so that we can retool this whole flower bed. I think I'd like to have some kind of an evergreen back here, kind of an anchor evergreen back here behind the fireplace because in the winter time, I mean, you can see everything around it here. We've got uh, lilac, the locust that may have to come out or we're not sure yet. Uh, this viburnum actually keeps most of its leaves during the winter. So that is considered your evergreen. Uh, but then there's the red bud, maple, everything loses its leaves. So I think I'd like to have some big, beautiful structural evergreen right in here uh, to kind of backdrop or be the backdrop to the flower beds that go in here. And as a quick reminder, the pathway is going to start here and it's just going to be a gentle curve out to the Hartley. All of this area that's grass will be flower bed. There will be flower bed on the right hand side of the walkway, but then we will keep grass some, but just not this much. There's also a few other roses I would like to get transplanted. They are, I don't know if that's going to happen today. We'll have to see how it goes, uh, but they're the lady gardener roses and they're right along the brick patio. I'm walking over there to show you what you doing, babe. Yeah, you playing in the fireplace. So right over here, they're gorgeous, gorgeous roses. And I'm kind of thankful they're not in full, full bloom right now. Otherwise this would be a lot harder. Look at how gorgeous these are. Oh, lightly fragrant, but beautiful. I love the color of these, but you know, the end goal is to have a boxwood hedge all the way around here. And we do have the boxwoods for this space, but I wanted to save these roses. So uh, we kept the boxwoods. We've just been watering those in the high tunnel, but as soon as I can get these things moved, then we can start in with our boxwood hedge right in this area. It's just that the brick patio, in order to make it the size we needed it to be so that it was all balanced, it had to come over and go quite a ways into the flower bed right there. And it's actually a great time to transplant because it's cool enough to where it's not going to be as big of a shock on the plant, but it's warm enough to where they may have a chance to root in a little bit before winter sets in. I'm gonna be cutting these roses back pretty hard so that the root system doesn't have a huge amount of leafy growth and top growth to support. It can focus a little bit more on root development. Let me show you this Tranquility Rose though. It's hard to distinguish anything <laughs> in this area. Like it looks really pretty from the first view that I showed you because it seems like all the flowers are on this side. Isn't that, that is so pretty. But you look at it from the front and it kind of always looks like that, but most of the summer or a good part of the summer, there's no color. It's just a bunch of like arching stems and kind of a messy, messy deal. Uh, the other thing, there's Douglas. The other thing, the icebergs do seem to suffer from chlorosis. So you can see the lighter color green with the darker green veining. Not as bad as some years because I think Aaron maybe has been treating them or did treat them in the beginning of the season. But the Tranquility Rose right here, nice and deep green. And look at that flower. Oh my goodness. That super creamy color kind of skewing yellow in the center. It's so pretty. So yeah, you can see how long this stem is. I'm going to be taking these back to like 18 inches, I think pretty far back. Okay. So I'm going to be working on uh, cutting back and digging up roses, moving them to a new location while Paul and Aaron uh, work on grass removal on this side of the, the yard. And I think they're going to use the tractor and hopefully just scrape it up. Ho hopefully it's an easy process. Um, I think I'll go ahead and paint my line, probably right in here-ish. 
So we'll keep the grass on this side and then from here-ish over, it'll be gone. And we were gonna just go ahead and scrape all of it up, which might be what we end up doing when the new sprinklers go in. Um, but just in case that doesn't happen, if we keep a little bit of this, the grass here, it might be a case where we can just go ahead and keep it and just you know put the new sprinklers in and go for it. Or we'll do it in the spring when we can reseed and have plenty of time to get grass going. We just are a little uh, concerned that we'll have a mud patch going on in here throughout the winter months and trying to avoid that. <laughs> so here we go. Alright guys, wanted to take a quick break to give you a progress report. So he's just backing up, putting the blade down, and scraping that grass right up. He's trying to be careful not to get too deep. Oh boy. That's one way to lift sod right there. Anyway, I ended up digging in four, four roses in this bed. There were three Pope John Paul II roses. They're beautiful white hybrid tea. I completely forgot they were in here. Um, so I went ahead and dug all three of those and they were all in a line right behind the Tranquility. Tranquility was here and then the other three were right, right lined up behind it. And I did cut a few stems that were looking pretty. Look at these. They are so gorgeous. So these right here, well most of them except for this. This one's Tranquility. The rest are the Pope John Paul II. Amazing fragrance on these. Really long, beautiful, strong stems. Oh. I'm gonna be happy to have those somewhere else in the garden. And you know, usually we offer anything that we're digging out to family or friends if they wanna come grab it, but I don't think in this case that it's gonna be worth the time trying to dig them up in any sort of salvageable manner. Uh, you know, and roses, especially roses like that, they grow so fast that if we should find a place later on to put icebergs, we can just get new ones. We usually try to save about everything that we can or give it away, uh, but you know, sometimes you gotta draw the line know it's worth it. All right, I'm gonna go plant these four roses and then we'll come back for the lady gardeners. Oh.
All right, guys, we are ready to call it for the day and it has been a day. Very productive, I love it. Look at this, oh my gosh, what a huge amount of work. Aaron, Paul, and Bethany tackled this area today while I was working on transplanting the roses and other things and it just, it, I, I mean, I don't wanna say it looks good, but it will look good. It's the next step to getting it to look good. It's been kind of an interesting space this year because when we put in the Hartley and the area surrounding it, we did have to cap a few sprinklers. Uh, so there were some patches of grass, like fairly large patches that just died and we just let them die because they weren't getting water because we knew we wanted to put in a pathway and expand the flower beds and that sort of thing. So. Anyway, it's kind of nice to see those dead patches scraped up, knowing that the next step is gonna happen here in a few days. So Pedro and his crew will be here next week. They'll level this all out, kind of clean it up, and then we'll have a nice pathway that just like gently leads you to the Hartley. And then once the path is in, we'll be able to maybe even refine the grass shape a little bit more. We kind of just made a, a clean line and made it swooped so it's easy to mow. Um, anyway, we'll get a, a feel for this space and be able to refine it further, but my goodness. Oh, and the tractor was very, very helpful in this space. But I know toward the end, when they needed a little bit of a cleaner line, Paul and Bethany were using hand tools to do it. So much work. And then there's my row of roses, all four of them that came out of this space. I'm really happy to have moved those. And I think that they'll do really well in their new location. And then these icebergs, you know, they just are the wrong plant for this spot. Sometimes that happens and sometimes you plant think something thinking it's going to be the perfect thing for this spot and it turns out to not quite be and you know if that happens take it out put something else in that's going to be nice. And this is the other space I tackled today. Doesn't that look different? Well I started to trim on that wisteria and then I just kept trimming and trimming <laughs> because I knew you know once I got those roses out I was kind of sizing up where the boxwoods are gonna go and they need to go right along, like just to the inside of the trunk of the wisteria. And the foliage had grown, you know, it was very thick all the way to the ground. So I started hacking away and thought, you know what, we're gonna have to keep this lifted anyway. And it'll be kind of nice to see the structure of the trunk, honestly. Anyway, I'm gonna have to get a ladder out because I just trimmed it as high up as I could. It's like a big poof on the top now. Kind of looks funny, but I'll take that uh, canopy in a little bit more tame I guess and we'll move the peach tree it's still hooked to drip that's why I left it there because I didn't want to have to figure out a spot to plant it today because I was just kind of running out of time but I got the four lady gardener roses out I got the uh, nepeta out and moved I'll show you where that ended up as well as the yarrow uh, what else is in here there were five serendipity alliums I texted Aaron's mom and said hey I'm digging these alliums up do you want them so she came right over and grabbed them for me for her garden so they will live on in a new space and the opening over here so there will be boxwoods that come all the way to about right here and then it'll be open to here and then the boxwoods will take off again which means I do still need to move a few things from this area this wisteria was here when we moved in I thought I cut it out or dug it out and I clearly didn't, so I need to remove that. Also need to dig up this boxwood, which is quite pretty. It's a Grand Blandy. I love the, the shape of it. I actually wonder if that wisteria was helping keep, it, keep a nice, nice tidy shape. But we'll dig that out. We need to dig this hosta right here and probably these two and just kind of clear this whole space out. And these we can just pop over here somewhere. Oh, it's looking so good. So now let's take a ride around and I will show you where all the roses ended up. Oh, and the boxwoods look so good. Oh my goodness, so tidy. I wanted to stop along here just to show you where the nepeta and the yarrow ended up, kind of down the way here. Just a few little plants. So we've got the ornamental oregano there. I popped the firefly, I can't remember, is it? It's a pink one. Uh, right in behind these Nepeta cat's pajamas right here, which are a lower one. And I will divide some other ones that we have and bring in a few more for this drift right here. And then we're going to put some iris right there. These Mary Rose roses are just gorgeous. Ambridge Rose. Perfection. Okay, right in this space where we just planted the pine and the Veronica, we've got the four lady gardener roses see how far I cut them back I just feel like you know I've done it before where I haven't cut them back and they just immediately wilt there's just too much top growth for the root system to support because roses are hard to dig 
first off, where I was digging these in particular, uh, it was really dry. In fact, I had Aaron check the irrigation system because it felt like it's been a long time since that flower bed had seen water because the dirt was just puffing off of everything. Um, anyway, they just are hard to get a, a big root ball, especially if it's really dry. Uh, everything kind of just falls off of the roots. So anyway, if they've got a huge leaf canopy on top and just a little bitty and just a little itty bitty roots down below. That's just not a good combination. And they might surprise you. I planted the Vanessa Bells that Aaron and I dug out so last year and we barely got any roots at all. And then I planted them huge big canopies and left them and it was hot out. And they, they uh, all looked like they had pretty much, well, two of them looked like dead and one of them looked pretty, pretty dead. And all three of them are alive and they look good. So you never know. That's why it's always worth a shot. But I think these are going to be gorgeous right here. That beautiful creamy color with the purple in front. And the Dervella, this is a Kodiak Fresh Blooms Yellow. I don't know if there are any blooms on it right now. But anyway, just a really pretty space. Right here we have the Tranquility Rose. And you saw how big it was wanting to get. So it will do a good job of filling in this space right here. We've got a lot of space around it. So we can start filling in with some stuff, but I think that'll be a really nice shrub kind of right by that beautiful totem pole panicum. And the other three ended up just a little ways down this way, right here, Pope John Paul II, three of them right in there. I love to see that the leaves still look really good this evening. I think they're gonna do well. In this space, you know, we've got coral berry. There's some beautiful Beyond Midnight Caryopteris, Desert Plains Panacetum, this is a Norway spruce of some kind that does get quite large, but it grows really slow. In fact, yeah, you can see it's new growth from this year, just a few inches every year. We also have the bit of honey Heliopsis and cat's pajamas nepeta and some other, some other things, but I kind of want to fill in right here. I had some sombrero gold echinacea and some agastache, both of which didn't thrive in this space. I think it would be really pretty to do just echinacea purpurea, just the classic purple echinacea right in here a big old drift of it. And I'm trying to think if that's it. I think that's it. I think we saw all the plants that I moved. Boy, when you go around and look at it, it doesn't look like as much work as it felt like. <laughs> I think digging stuff out can be, especially like established shrubs with thorns. That's the other thing. I wanted to show you the gloves I was using. One of them I ended up taking inside. Uh, this is the glove of my glove of choice when I'm using or working with roses. These are a Falco brand and I don't know what number, maybe we can put on the screen. Uh, they're not their actual rose gloves. They're, they do have a specific glove for roses, but these are awesome. I can just, I can do whatever I want. I can touch the thorniest stem and they're not making it through these gloves. I just love them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've got some more plant moving to do, as you can see over there by the brick patio, but it'll be so nice to get that done and get the boxwoods in, kind of tighten that area up. And I really do need to get after my fall containers. I feel like things are just moving so fast, but we'll get it. We'll get it done. We'll get to it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.